Hello, welcome to the Village of Gold River Community Wildfire Protection Plan. This is a video presentation that is supplementary to a formal report submitted to the Strathcona Regional District in the Village of Gold River. The full report and maps can be downloaded from the SRD website for further reference. My name is Colin Filleter. I'm a professional forester from Swab Air that helped write this report, along with my colleague, Cynthia Liu, who is also a professional forester. In this video, we'll provide an overview of the Gold River Community Wildfire Protection Plan, which is a 2020 update from the initial 2011 initial plan. We'll review the results of the local wildfire threat and risk assessments, the application of FireSmart program initiatives, and then review the recommendations made within this report. Any relevant but incomplete recommendations from the initial 2011 plan have been accounted for in the 2020 update. The Gold River Municipal Boundary, including the village site and old mill site, are surrounded by a two kilometer buffer, known as the Wildland Urban Interface, or the WUI. This is marked on the map with a yellow boundary. Gold River is located on Vancouver Island, about one hour west of Campbell River, and has a population of around 1,300 residents. Important infrastructure within the community include two schools, a municipal hall, an RCMP office, a health clinic, a recreation center, and has fire suppression coverage by a volunteer fire department. All maps in this presentation are high resolution, which are included in the final deliverables of this report, which are submitted to the SRD as well as the village. As part of this report, we conducted the suggested local wildfire threat assessment that was developed by BC Wildfire. The assessment is based on a spatial GIS analysis using mapping programs and a number of different factors to calculate the threat. The fuel type around the community has a large impact on the threat score. Fuel type influences the head fire intensity, which is the energy or heat intensity of a fire, as well as the spotting impact, which is the ability for wildfire to spread to adjacent areas. Wildfire threat is also based on historically recorded fire density of an area, including both human caused and lightning caused ignitions. Based on our spatial analysis, the AOI was classified into threat classes, ranging from no threat, such as water, to extreme threat. Most of the area around Gold River is classified as moderate threat, shown in yellow on this map, with some small pockets of high threat, which is orange. Recent wildfires within the AOI include a one hectare fire from 2014 that was near Highway 28. This was a human caused fire. A lightning caused fire from 2019 near Antler Lake burned 182 hectares, and this is visible for most parts of town. After we calculated the threat score, the next step is the local wildfire threat or risk classification. Again, this classification is conducted by parameters developed by BC Wildfire and done with GIS using multiple factors to determine the risk. The risk class is based on wildfire threat that we just discussed, the proximity of the community to the threat, fire spread patterns, which are impacted by localized wind patterns as well as slope. It should be noted that proximity has a significant impact on risk. Fuels within 100 meters of the community are higher risk than the same fuel type that might be 500 or 1,000 meters away from the community. For Gold River, most of our mapping for the risk came out at moderate risk, which is shown in yellow on the map. On this map, the red outline shows an area called the Wildland Urban Interface 100, or the WUI 100, and this is the 100 meters surrounding most clusters of structures within the community. Fuel treatment recommendations came from this assessment, something we will discuss later in the video. A common discussion point in this video is around FireSmart, which is a national initiative to provide communities, property owners, and residents the tools to assess fire hazard around their homes and then the strategies to start reducing these hazards. FireSmart is a shared responsibility involving all levels of government and involves participation from the private sector and community leaders. This photo shows a neighborhood in Fort McMurray after the 2016 wildfire. Some homes burned while others did not, and FireSmarting of these homes may have played a factor. Embers or sparks cause a significant proportion of structure ignitions. Fire smart assessments are done to assess both public and private property to determine what can be done to make structures and property more resistant to fire. A key aspect of the Fire Smart program is the structural ignition zone, which is comprised of four different priority zones. Each zone is assessed separately, and there's judging criteria that's based on the zone proximity, vegetation, and structural building materials and design. Several recommendations within the CD, CWPP address reducing hazards in the structural ignition zone. This CWPP makes a total of 33 recommendations. We'll highlight the high priority recommendations first and in greater detail before having a look at the medium and lower priority items. 
recommendations are prioritized based on their relative importance of reducing the likelihood of fire spreading into a community, reducing the impacts to critical infrastructure and property, and reduce neg negative economic and social impacts to the community. The availability of resources required to complete each recommendation should be assessed by the local government. To improve interagency communication and coordinated response to incidents outside of the municipal boundary, but within the fire protective services area, it is recommended that the Gold River Fire Department, the British Columbia Wildfire Service, and the SRD review the communication and response protocols for fires within the WUI, including the right-of-way areas along Highway 28. Currently, there is no community-specific evacuation maps that are known to be available to the public. It is recommended that the emergency preparedness and response plan be updated. This should include evacuation routes and muster locations. These need to be widely available and well known to the public. It is also rec recommended that the village review implementing a bylaw that gives fire chiefs specific authority to address fire hazards within the community. This includes the ability to remove fire hazards within the community, to restrict the use of backyard fire, fireworks, and other spark generating items. The old landfill site in Gold River is a known hazardous site within this, with the risk of spontaneous combustion. This poses a risk for fire to spread to adjacent fuels within the WUI. Procedures should be developed to mitigate the ignition risk, including temperature monitoring, fire watch during high and extreme fire danger, removal or redistribution of waste, and in maintaining moisture. As mentioned earlier, the local wildfire risk assessment shows moderate risk within 500 meters of the community. Recommendation six identified six sites for potential fuel treatment areas. They should further be investigated by a qualified registered professional for the development of site-specific fuel management prescriptions. This would help reduce the risk in these areas. Recommendation seven looks to increase community awareness engagement in the FireSmart program. Gold River should find a local representative that can deliver a FireSmart awareness presentation, as well as help train a FireSmart community champion. It is essential to find local FireSmart champions who will help lead the charge on localized community initiatives. Finding a FireSmart champion is usually a key step to getting organized and implementing FireSmart within a community. In 2012, a small area behind the municipal office received fuel treatment to reduce the wildfire risk. A community maintenance day should be arranged so that members of the community can see what a successful fuel treatment area looks like and help maintain it as some brush has grown back since 2012. To reduce the vegetation fuel hazard within the FireSmart Structure Ignition Zone, or the WUI 100, a community hazard assessment should be done in several areas. These areas include the Gold River Mobile Home Park, the Ridgeview area, the Peppercone Park and Trail, and the Gold River Secondary School. Gold River should offer periodic free alternative waste disposal options, such as free collection and chipping days. This would encourage homeowners to remove fuel from their yards and offers an alternative to backyard waste running. In coordination with BC Hydro, a hazard assessment should be done for the area around the BC Hydro substation. Depending on the results of the assessment, any hazardous fuel should be removed around the structure ignition zone. Recommendation 15 looks at bringing FireSmart direct directly to the residents of Gold River. Homeowners should be encouraged to do the free online FireSmart 101 course so that they begin to understand the program. They can then implement it on their own homes and properties. Recommendation 17 suggests having the full community wildfire protection plan and maps available on the village website, as well as the SRD website. This video could also be uploaded. Recommendation 18 and 19 look at increasing fire awareness to their citizens of Gold River. Gold River should regularly promote wildfire content up, leading up to the fire season for heightened citizen awareness. As many members of the community use social media, the SRD and Gold River should regularly promote wildfire content on their social media pages. This information could include fire smart info, fire bans, fire prevention tips, and other relevant information. For community members that don't use social media, other methods of communication can be used. This includes the physical distribution with mail, flyers, and pamphlets. In line with the physical documents for fire awareness, a Village of Gold River specific fire safety and wildfire preparation preparedness information pamphlet should be created and mailed out to all residents. The yearly pamphlet can include info on bylaws, wildfire regulations, fire smart info, 
BC Wildfire Service resources and links to other websites to obtain more information. Gold River should organize a Community Fire Safety Day that is an annual community event. This should focus on fire safety related activities, fire suppression practice, and fire smart activities. The fire Safety Day could be timed with Fire Prevention Week, which happens annually during the second week of October. It is recommended that this plan be shared with local forestry companies on both private land and public land, as well as other industrial stakeholders within the area, such as BC Hydro. Areas of concern to highlight include reducing fuel hazards within recently harvested cut blocks and maintaining the Nimkish Road as a safe secondary evacuation route. To improve water availability for WUI fires or fires in isolated areas outside of hydrant coverage, water tank trucks should be stored at strategic locations during high fire danger areas. The village could look at to engage in a mutual aid agreement with Western Forest Products for the use of their water tanker trucks for fires within the WUI. Based on Community wildfire plan engagement with the Gold River Fire Department, not all members have had the wildland forest firefighting level one training. This is due to timing and availability of the training course. It is recommended that this training be offered when available to all members of the volunteer fire department. Recommendation 31 looks to improve the equipment availability for structure protection by having Gold River engage with Campbell River in a mutual aid agreement. This mutual aid agreement would have deployment of the structural protection units in specified WUI emergencies. We will now discuss the eight medium priority recommendations within this report. Annual community event days are a great opportunity to spread fire smart awareness and educational materials. Gold River should invite a local fire smart representative to deliver the materials at these days. A key element of fire smarting a home is choosing building materials with low flammability. Gold River officials should provide the FireSmart Home Development Guide to builders whenever a building permit is applied for, as well as consider the guide if local municipal buildings are being built by Gold River. As discussed earlier, there should be an emphasis for moving away from backyard burning of woody debris and waste. As Gold River begins to offer other options, such as hauling away or chipping debris, it is essential that these alternatives are communicated to the public. Regular communication between the Strathcona Regional District and Gold River should occur to ensure implementation of these recommendations are being completed. Annual priority goals should be set and worked towards. Recommendation 25 looks to improve the wildland fire suppression equipment availability. The fire department has expressed the desire to acquire additional fire suppression equipment to be better prepared in the event of a WUI fire. To improve emergency evacuation, communications to the community, residents should be encouraged to join the SRD's Connect Rocket. The Connect Rocket is a free emergency notification service that sends out notifications whenever an emergency occurs. Recommendation 30 looks to maintain and improve communications with the BC Wildfire Service. To do so, annual meetings should be held with the North Island Fire Zone and the local fire departments to review the incident command structure and emergency support services. Local community members should be recruited and trained to take on emergency social services training. To build stronger relationships and knowledge within the BC Wildfire Service, as well as with the nearby TASIS Fire Department, Gold River should coordinate joint annual mock exercises. At these, information and technical practice knowledge are shared. Skills and knowledge to review and practice include fire line construction, pump operations, sprinkler protection, portable water tank deployment, and wildland hose operations. We will now discuss four lower priority recommendations included in this plan. As I mentioned earlier, the village had a small area next to the municipal hall treated in 2012 to reduce the fire risk. This area and future treatments should be revisited every seven to eight years to maintain them. This includes removing any surface fuels and even engaging in understory thinning or pruning as necessary. When building or upgrading municipal buildings, Gold River should adopt fire smart practices. This includes for any buildings on their municipal lands, as well as regional district owned infrastructure. Recommendation 16 looks at delivering fire smart education to the schools, where specific educational packages exist for teaching younger audiences. 
Students will often bring home learning materials to their parents, who then can implement FireSmart on their own homes. Recommendation 32 and 33 look at reducing the likelihood of structure fires from wildfire embers by using sprinkler kits. One option for structural protection units is a joint purchase, and this could be shared by Gold River, Tassis, and the Muchatlet First Nation. Another option is to current homeowners to buy their own sprinkler kits to set up around homes and on top of roofs. This is a relatively low cost method in extreme wildfire scenarios that can save structures. To summarize, the area of interest around the village of Gold River is generally characterized by moderate wildfire risk. The risk is moderate to high for mature forest fuel types closer to the community, as well as within 500 meters of structures. The risk is lower moving away from the community. The recommendations that we covered focus on key areas of wildfire protection, including fire mark activities, community awareness, and education. Other recommendations include developing protocols for known hazards, such as the landfill site and having a necessary fire suppression equipment tools, water, and training necessary to fight a wooey fire. For more detailed information, review the Community Wildfire Protection Plan document and associated high-resolution maps. We'd like to thank the following individuals for sharing their time with us through meetings, phone calls, field reviews, and information and data sharing. Sean Koopman from the SRD for his vision and encouragement throughout the project, as well as Brad and Lisa from the Village of Gold River for always answering our questions and taking time to meet with us. Scott Boyd from Western Forest Products for providing LIDAR data that was very helpful in our data analysis. All of your guys' ideas, insights, and feedback helped shape the CWPP. For further information, please refer to the full document on the SRD website. Thank you very much.